It's hot as balls outside, but I got an idea. Okay, we're back. It is getting hot as balls outside and whatever. You can hear the AC running in here. It's hot, hold on. Let me go shut that off so that we've got some sound that's better. Okay, we don't got a lot of time to record because it's gonna get hot in here. Redivus sent us two radios to review the RT76 and the RB26. Now, for the purposes of this review, let's not call this the review for the 76. I'm gonna do that later. But I'm gonna bring it along to illustrate a point about wattage. So it's gonna be involved, but this isn't its review. The main video that I wanted to review is this little guy right here. This is the Redivus RB26. Now it is a fully licensed part 95 GMRS radio. It's approved by the FCC. It's ready to go. But the thing that, that really caught my eye with this little radio is its price point. It's, you can get it on Amazon for 25 bucks, but for $25 you actually get a full GMRS radio with a three watt output. And to me, that kind of set it apart from this guy. This is just your standard GMRS, FRS, excuse me, FRS version of a Midland radio. This is the X Talker T51. You can get a pair of these for like 50 bucks. Well, when you do the math at less than $25 a piece, this makes this less than $50 for a pair. They're also sold in bulk packs. But the big difference between this radio and this radio is this guy only puts out a watt and a half at its highest power setting. This puts out three watts. That's double the power. Now, in the lower power settings, higher wattage is, I should say, there's like this exponential curve of how power is affected going up. It's like, I don't know. I'm sure that voiceover me will find this later and tell you how this works. Quite simply, the law of diminishing returns means that for every watt of power you add to a radio, the gain in signal distance you can expect will decrease exponentially. But when you're down in the lower amounts of wattages to start with, you're doubling your power going from a watt and a half to three watts. And to me, that's a big deal, especially when you look at the form factor of these two radios. They're very similar. Weight-wise, this one's a little heavier. When you're looking at the forward footprint, Obviously the x are smaller, but the side profile, they're not that much different. I don't think you'd be able to tell a lot of a difference in carrying one of these two radios around with you, which is why I feel like at three watts here, you're not doing too bad. I, I'm willing to bet that just a little bit of increase in mass and form factor is gonna be completely offset or outweighed by the fact that this thing's putting out so much more power. Without any further ado, I'm gonna get this thing set up and we're gonna go take a walk. All right. All right, we're getting closer to our first stop. I just gotta, well, I gotta go play Frogger over here. This should be fun. Especially since I gotta film this. I'm gonna have to do it twice. <laughs> So we're a quarter mile into this. It's time to start checking these radios out. We are sitting at 333. Just so you know when we go to look at the tape at the end. So here goes with the uh, X Talker T51. T51. Test, T51 test, flat clear. All right, RB26 radio check. Alright, so that one's done. Now let's check the RT-76. RT-76, checking in 333. RT-76, checking in 333. Let's go see what a half mile looks like. Okay, so we are a half mile into this. The house is somewhere over here, other side of the canal. And, uh, as you can see, there's there's not a lot of obstruction or anything between here and there. So it should be a pretty easy shot at a half mile. Let's see how the watt and a half comes through. Radio check on the X Talker, half mile at 344. 
Okay, let's try the Radivus RB26. Radivus RB26 at one half mile at 344. Okay, let's try the RT76. RT76. Here we are at a mile. We've kind of dog legged off. So that trail we were on before was nice and straight running right away from the house. So as we were gaining distance, there weren't objects that were coming in between us and the house. It was just open trail. As you can see behind me, the house is somewhere back over there and there's a whole neighborhood, brush and desert in between us. This theoretically should be getting harder for things to penetrate through as far as signal and of course distance. This is where theoretically the advantage of higher wattages is going to make the difference in reaching that radio back there at home. So first up is the X-Talker. We're looking at 4.04 p.m. right now. X-Talker check 4.04. So there we go. X-Talker's in the book. Let's try the RB26. Gotta love her, man. She just jumps right out there, doesn't she? RB26 at 408, one mile. RB26 at 408, one mile. Now let's try the RT76. Let's see if, if it's gonna be the grandfather of all range. It should already be keyed up, so. RT76. All right, we're about a mile and a quarter in. Now, if it's a little noisy out here right now, it's because I'm within a couple hundred yards of Interstate 17. And I'm gonna do a test here at the mile and a quarter mark. I'm gonna do two tests on all the radios. My first test is gonna be down here on the surface level. The second test is gonna be up on top of that pedestrian bridge going over the I-17. What I'm hoping to demonstrate with that is just how much of an advantage height gives you just by increasing like God, that's maybe 20, 25 feet off, off of the valley floor right here. And that's roughly about the same height that the radio back at home sitting. And it should be tall enough that it gets up and over all of those house rooftops over there. So we'll find out. It is so hot out right now, it's like 100. I think it actually did just hit 100. All right, here we go, we're hot. Next talker, mile and a quarter, valley floor. Okay, RB26. Valley 4 at 426. RB26, Valley 4 at 426. Owl copy. Okay, now let's do the other Ratavis. I'm just gonna call it Ratavis, that's kinda cute, right? RT76, Valley 4 at 426. RT76, Valley 4 at 426. Okay, now we'll go see how it, uh, it works up on top and see if there's any big kind of difference here. reach the top I'm gonna to transmit from here you can see out over there the house is yonder but we're up above those rooftops now so the line of sight should be better for the lower powered radios uh, I'm not all the way out on the bridge because as you can see it's it's kind of sealed up in this Faraday cage right here that I just don't know if I'll be able to get a signal in or out of so I'll stand out here and, and we'll try it out real quick so First up out of the gate is going to be the X Talker. It's 4:35. Let's see what we got. X Talker. X Talker, a mile and a quarter at elevation. 4:35. X Talker at 4:35. One and a quarter mile at 25 foot elevation. L copy. RB26. Mile and a quarter, 25 foot elevation at 425. 435. Excuse me, 435. RT76. At 435. playing traffic okay I'm up here I'm in the I'm in the big concrete steel cage I'm halfway through it so I'm out here it's one end down there's the other I'm at the midway point that's northbound that's southbound traffic oh 
room is somewhere yonder over there. I'm going to go ahead and fire up these radios and see if they can get a signal out from this cage that I'm in. I mean, it's, it's a steel truss pedestrian bridge, but it does have this expanded metal grating in it, which may or may not affect how we get a signal out. So let's go ahead and test one radio. Let's, let's do the X-Talker right now. What time is it? Okay. RT 76 inside the Ped Bridge at 444. How copy RT 76. Mile and a third inside the Ped Bridge. How copy. All right. Well, that just means one more thing to do, and that's I'm going to come over here. But again, on the other side of the freeway, we're going to see how well we can get out with something like that in our way, which is concrete sound wall. They put it along all these freeways so that it keeps the sound off the neighborhoods, but it's also steel and concrete, something that radio frequencies don't like to push through. This might be it right here. If we get on the other side of this, we're down low. We've got concrete wall. We've got freeway. We've got desert and a housing development before we get back to our house all the way over there. Uh, I'll be really interested to see what happens with all this stuff in the way, how it changes that signal dynamic. Okay. We're now down off the bridge. There's a concrete sound wall. Home somewhere about in line with that tower over there. Way that way, about a mile and a third that way. I'm gonna walk out this way just a little bit. I'm not expecting a thing. In fact, I, I wasn't expecting anything from the X-Talker after about a half a mile. So I'll be really curious when we get home to see what happens. X-Talker, X-Talker, mile and a third, other side of the freeway at 450. Okay, RB26, RB26. Okay, so the only one of these that I really have confidence that Welcome. might hit is going to be this one at five. Channel minutes. load. We'll find out. RT seventy six. One and a third mile. Okay, Jack, I'll let you go. One and a third miles on the side. Sounds good. Eight congestion. WRGC. Two way congestion. How about? I think I'm going to go home now and pull the tape see how everything did, and then kind of go from there. Okay, so we went out, we did our test, we found out what it was that we needed to know as far as how does range obstacles affect these things, and is there a real big difference between the one and a half, three, and five watt levels? And to me, in my opinion, we certainly found out that the three and five watt radios were much more capable of pushing through obstacles, and things in the way that were kind of, you know, diminished line of sight situations. Specifically, I can think of trying to punch its way out of that cage inside of the ped bridge, trying to get over or around that concrete barrier that we were standing behind, or even when we were walking down the trail and we were just in some more brush and clutter. The T51 with its one and a half watts was just not hitting the other radio back here at the house. And so to me, if it's me spending my money and I gotta pay 50 bucks for two of these or one of these for $22 or you can get them in a two pack on Amazon for 40, I'm gonna go with this one. There's a few reasons why just beyond the advantages that we were shown with the wattages. And that is that this is a true GMRS radio. This is a rinky dink FRS slash GMRS. This isn't gonna do repeaters, this one will. This one, while you can see it's not got any functions on the front for programming, you can get the Chirp software or Redivis' software for a Windows PC and a cable and program it. This guy right here, you're programming it on the face. Uh, I do believe this will monitor NOAA or weather radio. I don't think this one will, but you can program this. You can put the repeaters that you need into it 
and you essentially set it and forget it because there is nothing on the front. It is very simple, it's straightforward. This is a radio that you could program. Say you were gonna go out with a group of people, but the people you were going with weren't really radio people. You could hand them this radio all programmed into the channels and frequencies you were gonna be using on that trip and just say, here you go, keep it on channel 22 and it's gonna stay there and you're not gonna have any problems, you're not gonna worry about them accidentally kicking your privacy codes off or whatever. Same goes with the repeaters. If you hang out in the same area all the time, you can go ahead and just set it to whatever repeater you are gonna be using in that area with the specific tones for those repeaters. Now, if you're gonna be traveling a lot, I'd suggest going with something like the RT76P where you can actually get in here and program everything on the face. And this is only $40 right now on Amazon. I think this is probably one of the best deals going on handheld GMRS radios. Uh, but we're talking about this guy. Now, the only hang up I had with this radio is that it isn't agreeing with my Mac. And I don't know, I mean, Redivis only makes software for Windows PCs for their radios. But I tried downloading the Mac version of Chirp and I've tried two different cables to connect and it's just not working out. And I don't know if it's my Mac, if it's Chirp, if it's whatever. So I would be really hesitant to purchase this if all I had was a Mac or I couldn't verify that I could make Chirp work before I got into this because there is another problem that I have with Redivis in particular and that's they ship all of their radios with privacy codes already activated. So if the people you're gonna be talking to or wanting to talk to don't have that same privacy tone activated in their radio, you're not gonna be able to communicate back and forth. I think that Redivis should be shipping these radios with all of the privacy tones off. That being said, they're consistent across the board. So this is gonna ship with the same set of privacy tones in it as this one ships it by default. If you buy Redivis products, you'll still be able to communicate even without that feature, but still to me, I wanna be able to get in there and either program it or have it completely open and unrestricted. To me, the build quality seems okay for what it is, uh, but you know, only time will tell. If you're interested, I've put a link in the description below to all three radios we tested today. Go check it out. Uh, as always, I'm Matt Kester. You can find me at Facebook and Instagram, Fruit Explorer Dad. Follow the channel on Instagram at Secondhand Overland or check out our new Facebook group. Both links are in the description below. Until next time, be good.